give you something to be a help to, an encouragement to you. Exodus chapter number 6, and uh, we'll see what the Lord has for us here uh, tonight. Exodus chapter number 6, and uh, look with me there at verse number 1. Exodus chapter number 6, and verse number 1, you'll have to bear with me and if I get a little cough and whatnot going on, but I, I think we'll be okay. Um, 
Exodus chapter 6 and verse 1. Let's read a few verses here. The Bible said, Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let him go. With a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. Aren't you glad that God's always faithful over the generations to reveal himself? Uh, he, I appeared unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, I was not known to them. If you'll look back in verse number two, the Bible said, God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Remember when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? He said, tell them, I am sent you. Verse number uh, three there, that name Jehovah, uh, it carries that meaning of I am. Uh, Jehovah, was, was I not known to them? And, and look at verse four. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they uh, were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. And I will bring you uh, uh, from, uh, excuse me, out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you uh, to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out uh, from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you in, in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and will give it to you for an heritage, I am the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, for the next little while that, Lord, you'd help us. Uh, Lord, as we look into your word, may you speak to us from your word and through your word. I thank you, God, uh, for all that you do for us and how that you help us. And Lord, have your will and have your way. And we'll thank you and bless you. We ask these things in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, we do pray tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I uh, heard about a guy that uh, was going to train to be a paratrooper. And if you know anything about a paratrooper, that has to do with a parachute and jumping out of perfectly good airplanes, all right? And so before his first jump, Brother Glenn, uh, they gave him some instructions, said, son, you'll jump when you're told. Then when you jump, you'll count to 10, you'll pull the ripcord, and in the unlikely event your parachute does not open, pull the emergency ripcord. When you get down, a truck will be there uh, to take you back to base. Uh, before they had gotten up very far, this young man had memorized every syllable of these instructions. He knew exactly what he was supposed to do. The plane climbed to 10,000 feet, and the paratroopers began to jump out. When the young man was told to jump, he jumped. Uh, he counted to 10 and pulled the rip cord. Nothing happened. His chute fell to open. He pulled the emergency rip cord. Still, nothing happened. No parachute. He said to himself, this is just great. I imagine when I get down, there will not be a truck to take me back either. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 um, when we read about uh, the children of Israel here, uh, they're somewhat in the same situation. Uh, they have been in Egypt now for 400 years. If you'll remember, uh, they go down to Egypt. God blesses uh, Jacob there, and uh, or Joseph rather. He, uh, he blesses him and uh, makes of uh, Egypt and makes of uh, Israel a great nation. And uh, but in that time frame. Uh, after the times of favor, now adversity has came upon them. They find themselves to be slaves to the Egyptians. They're suffering and affliction in their trouble. 
They cry out to God. Look, we have time tonight. Look over at Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 23. Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 23. The Bible said, It came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Aren't you thankful that God hears our cry? Whenever we're in a situation that we can't fix. And the Bible said this. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel. And God had respect unto them. So he heard their cries. They began to call out on God. And God raises up an unlikely deliverer. God raises up a man by the name of Moses. He could not speak plain. He, he was not of plain speech. He had problems of uh, stuttering. In fact, he, he argued with God whether he would go or not. And we all know he ended up taking his brother to go with him. And uh, as he goes there, he confronts Pharaoh. Uh, he demands the release of the people. And that's in chapter number five. Pharaoh refuses uh, the demands. He makes the burden even greater than it was before. Israel's burden. Uh, to the point of breaking, they turn on Moses, and Moses in turn turns to God. Can I tell you this? When people turn on you, and they will, when people turn on you, uh, it'd be best for us to learn to turn to God. Uh, it's easy for us to want to snap back at them and go back at them, uh, but uh, when people turn on you, learn uh, to go to God because God can fix it all. God can uh, work in every situation. Somebody say amen right there. He turns to the Lord. When he does, God gives him some words of comfort. Some words of encouragement. And that's what I want to share with us tonight here in Exodus chapter number 16. Some help for heavy hearts. Help for heavy hearts. You know, uh, in this season, in this time of the year, uh, there are a lot of people, in fact, I've heard about uh, some churches having what they call a blue Christmas. A blue Christmas. And it, what it is is a special service they have for people uh, that are grieving. They have a special service for people uh, that are going through a hard time and mourning uh, the loss of a loved one or whatever. And they try to minister to them through that. And I'm not against that. And I, I thank God for people that love you and help you through your hard times. So aren't you glad that whenever we get down, there's some people that, that know something about being down too. And they won't let you stay down. And they'll get down there with you and help you out of the valley. Hallelujah. I'm glad. Even more than that, I've got a God that will go down with me in the valley, and he brings me out every time. Amen. Uh, you and I may have burdens in our lives. You and I certainly do have burdens in our lives. Maybe it's not like this young man that there's parachutes not opening and the truck's not coming. Uh, but there are times that you and I go through difficult seasons and I want to look at some areas in our lives that God cares about. Uh, can I tell you this? God can help you in every area of your life. Uh, let me look uh, there at verse number 6. Verse number 6 said this, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you uh, out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Number one, God cares about our frustrations. God cares about our frustrations. There in verse number six said, I will bring you out from the burden of the Egyptians. He also said, I will rid you of their bondage. There's a difference between a burden and a bondage. Burdens are those things that trouble us. Those are our worries, our concerns, our problems. Every one of us have burdens in our life. Every one of us deal with burdens on our life. Some of you right now, you're worried about how you're going to pay that bill. Some of you are worried about that youngin'. Some of you are worried about that great youngin'. 
Uh, some of you are worried about a situation that uh, maybe the doctor said something and just hadn't got uh, the, the results back yet and you don't know what to do. Uh, aren't you glad, hallelujah, that God knows all about our burdens. Uh, God knows all about our cares. Uh, God knows about those things uh, that bother us, uh, uh, that get us bound down. Uh, I'm glad he's a God uh, that will help us uh, in our times of burden. He cares about our frustrations. He cares about our burdens. He cares about our bondage. Bondage is different than a, than a burden in that bondage is something that controls us. Whether it's people, whether it's substance, whether it's sin, whether it's an attitude, bondage is something that controls us. You know, there's a lot of people that are under control of substances tonight. There are people that are, are, are hooked on alcohol. There's people that are hooked on drugs. There's people that are hooked on pornography. There's people that are hooked on all sorts of things. And that's a bondage that holds people back. That's a bondage that Satan uses uh, to hold us down. But I'm thankful tonight to tell you that God cares about your bondage. Uh, and God can deliver, just like he delivered the children of Israel, he can deliver you uh, and he can deliver me uh, from the heavy bondage that lays on us. You know the key to getting delivered from the bondage uh, is when the children of Israel called out on God. When they begin to cry out on God. Just as long as you're comfortable in your bondage, uh, just as long as your bondage ain't bothering you, uh, uh, then you'll never bother God about it. That's, that's pretty good. I'll say that again. Just as long as the bondage is not bothering you, you won't bother God about it. But when it gets to bothering you, you'll start bothering God about it. And God will get bothered about it. And God will do something about it. Somebody needs to go to church with me tonight. I'm glad that God is a God that takes care of our burdens. Amen. He's a God that takes care of our bondage. People Sin, attitude. Man, they, Lord help you know them, and I do too. They, some people that, man, they got a chip on their shoulder and they just waiting for you to knock it off. They just walking around with an attitude ready, set, cocked, and ready to go. I mean, just all the time, everything in the world is wrong. You heard about that old guy. I told you before, I think. That old guy, he woke up, he took a great big old whiff. And he said, man, this room stinks. He got up, walked out of the room, walked in the house, took a big smell. He said, man, this house stinks. He walked outside, took a big old smell. He said, this whole world stinks. And while, uh, while he was asleep or while he had eaten before, before he laid down, he had Lindbergh cheese in his mustache. And that's why he was smelling the way he was. Sometimes uh, our own attitude uh, is the thing we're smelling. We, we look at everything and everybody else uh, and we think well, everything in the world's wrong uh, and sometimes it's our own attitude uh, that we're carrying around with us. Uh, uh, we've been offended. Uh, uh, we're bitter. We got this problem going on and that problem. We got unforgiveness in our heart uh, and we are burdened uh, and we are living in bondage uh, because of that. But can I tell you this? There's a God that delivers us from bondage tonight. Amen. Well, hallelujah, i got a couple of people that's with me. We know the verse over in 1 Peter chapter number 5 and verse number 7. Let's let, we got time tonight. Let's just flip over there. I didn't prepare a, a fancy slideshow and all that stuff tonight. But uh, we'll just go old-fashioned. 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 5. And verse number seven, somewhere here in my Bible, is Peter. There's James. There's Peter. First Peter chapter number five and verse number seven. The Bible said this, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. He cares for you. He cares for me. The Bible said for us to cast. I've told you this before, but Brother Rodney, I learned something while I was studying uh, for this message. Uh, casting, not, not only does it mean to throw. Uh, casting means it, to throw 
once and for all. To throw it away. Not to try to get it back again. Ain't that the way we are? Man, we cast it out just like we're fishing. We cast it out. We're going to reel it back in. After a minute, we come down here to the altar when the invitation is given. We'll come down here to the altar and we'll cast it uh, down here at the altar. But before we hit the road out there, we done reeled that thing back in. God's not asking you uh, uh, to cast it and pull it back. Uh, he's asking you uh, to throw that thing away. Uh, get rid of it. Uh, be sin of it for your life. Uh, hey, I'm glad to tell you uh, uh, that God cares about you uh, and you can cast your burden on him. You can cast those issues in your life on him. He can hold them all. He can handle them all. And he can take them all. Somebody give him some glory in that. Amen. He cares about us. While we're there, turn back to Hebrews. That's just a few uh, pages. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter number 4 tonight. Look at verse number 15. Hebrews 4. Verse 15 said, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore, hallelujah, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and to help in time of need. He cares about our frustrations, the things that burden us, the things that hold us in bondage. You know, he'll give you freedom. He'll give you freedom from the things that bind you. He'll give you freedom from the things that you are bound by. He delivers us from our sin. Israel, back in, back in the book of Exodus there, Israel has slipped into a time of sin. Israel goes through cycles in their life where they just go. I was reading through the book of Jonah here this week. And uh, John was told to go down to Nineveh. And John said, no, I ain't going there. I'm going to Tarshish. And uh, he ended up going where God wanted him to go. How many of you know something about that? You'll end up being where God wants you to be. It might not be as easy as it would have been if you went the first time. But uh, John ended up down in Nineveh. And he preached. And, man, they started repenting. The king repented. They put sackcloth. I mean, the whole city. It was three days to walk across this city. It was a huge city. I had thousands and thousands of people. And they, they started repenting, calling out on God. Johnny got up there after he preached that man. If it was me, Brother Ronnie, I'd been making a newsletter. I'd been sending it out, telling about how many came. Now, the buses had to wait. They're coming from the balcony. I'd been doing all that. But old Johnny, he said, no. He said, Lord, I knew you'd do this. It's just like you to give them mercy. Aren't you glad it's just like God to give us mercy? Aren't you glad it's just like God to turn things around? We deserve the judgment. We deserve the punishment. But I'm glad to say hallelujah tonight. That is just like God to give us mercy. Amen. He delivers us from our sin. The problem was solved in Jesus Christ. Jesus can take away our sin. He gives us power over even those besetting sins that we have to deal with. I believe all of us will probably testify from the day we got saved to now. There's been things, there's been bondages that God has delivered us from. There's things that you dealt with as a young Christian and you struggled with that God has helped you. God has blessed you. And you don't go back to those things anymore. Now, I am not telling you you're perfect because I know me and I know most of us. We're not. Just as soon as we get Victor up one area in our life, I know what old Slewfoot does. He starts messing with another area in our life. And, and, you know, I don't think that I'll ever get completely delivered from all of it until I get delivered from this old flesh, uh, this old sinful flesh. Uh, John said it like this, 1 John 3, verse number 2, for we know we shall see him, uh, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. One of these days, I'm going to be just like him. One of these days, I'll be delivered from this body of death. Uh, as Paul said, uh, I'll, be, I'll let go of all this uh, from 
now to then, I just go keep on counting the victories. From now to then, I just go keep on asking God to help me in this area of my life. And when God helps me, delivers me there, and Satan tries to miss somewhere else, I'm going to know that God did it back there, and God do it up here. Somebody say amen. Right there. Amen. He delivers us from sin. He gives us freedom from sin, freedom from slavery. Over back in uh, the book of Exodus there, they were slaves uh, there to Pharaoh. They were slaves working in making uh, these bricks, mortar, slime pits, the Bible said. I, I, I can't even begin to imagine what it would have been like to have been serving under the taskmasters, the evil taskmasters in Egypt in the heat and all in the dry climate and the, and the environment that they'd have to uh, live in and have to go through everything they went through. And, and, and whenever uh, it looked like that God was going to deliver, then things just started getting worse. Can I tell you this? Sometimes whenever God's starting to do something, sometimes some things get worse before he turns, or turns them around. Here's, here's a principle that you, can, you, you and I can learn. In the book of John, in fact, we'll turn there tonight. Look at John chapter 12. John chapter number 12. And I believe it's verse 24. John 12. And uh, let's find verse number 24. Verily, verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. In every, every vision, every dream, you can go through the Bible. You can see where God would give a vision or God would give a dream. And it would go through a shaky stage. It would go through a shattered stage. It would go through a dying stage. But then it would go through a blooming stage. Amen. Uh, God would turn it around. There's things in my life I'll never forget. I, had, uh, I was getting ready to go off to Bible college. And I'd been praying about it. I knew that God was calling me to go to Victory Baptist College. I'd looked at, I'd been going to a Bible Institute up in Statesville, and it was fine, it was good, I, I, but it was just like, just a step above what Sunday school would be like. And I knew I needed more than that, Brother Ronnie. And so I started looking at Bible colleges, and I looked at Tabernacle in Greenville, and I looked at Victory down in North Augusta. And uh, God directed my heart. Uh, I remember Joe Arthur was preaching under the tent on a Friday night down at the camp meeting we went to, and uh, I knew that night that's where I was supposed to be. And uh, we came back and started trying to put things in order uh, to be able to move down there and go to Bible college and all that. Well, that started a chain of events uh, that I never saw coming, and uh, a lot of issues that I, I don't want to go into tonight but I remember going home from church on one Sunday afternoon and uh, Dr. Brown used to send out I guess he may, they, they may still do something like that they used to do tape of the month um, you know that was back before CDs were real big is the tape of the month and uh, I was signed up for that and uh, we had just got that tape right before a lot of this and uh, that morning of church Man, I was crushed by some things that had transpired. And um, I remember going home and Kelly was making something, whatever we were going to eat for lunch. I laid in the floor and just listened to that tape. And I remember how God was speaking to my heart. And I, I, in my mind, in my flesh, I thought things will never be right. I can't ever do what I'm supposed to do because there's so many things, so many obstacles, so many things wrong you can't come together. But little did I know, God was putting place, putting pieces in place. And God was taking pieces out of place. I went down to Victor Baptist College later on, had every intention to go to a little town called Ashland, Oregon, just north of the California border. And uh, they still, as far as I know, they still meet gospel preaching churches in that area. And that was my heart. I was going to go do that. Well, God had other plans. 
God had other desires and other intentions. And through that breaking and that shattering of my dream, God did something in my life. That, you know, I didn't know that this back then, but they call the Pacific Northwest the preacher's graveyard. There's a lot of preachers that go there because there's a great need. Seattle, Portland, all that area needs uh, gospel preaching churches, but so many people will go because of the climate, because of the atmosphere, because of all that this involved in it. It's a hard, hard place to serve. And man, I was just, I was rared up, ready to go, Miss Becky. I just thought, you know, I was going to catch the world by the tail and set it on fire. But God knew what I needed. God knew what needed to happen. I had to go through this break. But God has allowed me to see some bloom. Maybe you've gone through some breaking. Man, things didn't turn out like you thought they would. It was so, wasn't supposed to be this way. But God had another plan. And God let you through the shattered and the broken stage see you to see some bloom in your life. Somebody ought to thank God for that tonight. Amen. He delivers us from slavery. They were slaves in Egypt. God said, I'm going to get you out of here. And as we all know, he did with a high hand. Uh, they went marching out. Not only did they, they leave, they demanded of their captors, they demanded those they served uh, things to take with them, and they gladly gave it to them. Now, only God can do that. Uh, as they were leaving, they, they said, I need this, give me this, give me that, and they gave it all to them, and here they go, hightailing it out of town, and uh, you know the rest of the story. Look at verse number seven. I'll try to hurry and finish up here. Verse number seven said, and I will take you uh, to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. God used the affliction of Israel to bring them closer to him. They'd see his power, they'd experience his grace, they'd know his peace, they'd know his presence in a way they wouldn't have before. And I think we could all uh, know, know that. God cares, uh, not only does he care uh, about our frustrations, he cares about our fellowship. He wants uh, to walk with you and he wants to talk with you. He wants to be close to you. He gives us a personal uh, fellowship. He wants to be intimate with his people. Uh, the trials of life uh, are designed to drive us into his arms. And you know as well as I do, there are times uh, that we get rebellious. There are times that we get hard against God. There are times that uh, things uh, bother us. And instead of running to God, we run from God. But God wants to hold us and God wants to help us. He's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to help you. He's not trying to hurt you. He wants to develop you. Great faith is shaped Someone said this, great faith is shaped on the anvil of affliction. He's trying to teach us about his power, his presence, his peace. He provides a personal relationship. He provides a powerful fellowship. Uh, fellowship, rather. Uh, God would leave no doubt in their mind that he was the God uh, that was working on their behalf. Remember what he said? He said, they've not known me as Jehovah before. They knew me as, let, let's look back in verse chapter number six and verse number uh, three. I appeared unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob and by my name of God Almighty, the God that keeps his covenant, God Almighty. He said, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. He said, what I'm getting ready to show you, Moses, uh, and what they're getting ready to find out uh, is I'm a God that'll be with them uh, through everything they go going through. Remember when Moses was having a hard time? Moses was about to give up. And he said, God, let me just see you. He said, hallelujah. He told old Moses, he said, uh, there's a place uh, by me uh, standing on the cleft of the rock, uh, and I'll pass by. 
And when he saw God, uh, things changed. When he saw God, uh, business picked up in his life. Uh, can I tell you this? Uh, that God wants to have fellowship with you uh, and fellowship with me. Uh, and God wants us to know him personally uh, and powerfully. And I say hallelujah. I'm glad uh, that God uh, seeks uh, to reveal himself to us tonight. We, uh, <laughs> let me give you this last one. Look at verse number eight. It said, I will bring you into the land, to the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. God promises Israel, or God's promises rather, to Israel are not li limited to the, li the deliverance uh, from Egypt. Uh, he made great promises beyond just getting out of Egypt. You know, some people, uh, they'll come to church and they'll run down to an altar and they just don't want to go to hell. That's wonderful. I don't want to go to hell. Hallelujah. I don't think anybody should want to go to hell. Uh, but there's so much more in this thing of salvation than just not going to hell. There's a relationship you can have. There's a little bit of heaven before you get to heaven. I'm glad I could know something about the glory a long time before I get to glory. I can know something about peace uh, when the world falls apart. Uh, when everything in my life uh, is crumbling down. I, I can know the peace of God. I, I can sing it uh, with the songwriter. It is well with my soul. I, I'm glad, hallelujah, that God's still a God uh, that will give us peace uh, in difficult times. Uh, and it's not just about that I don't get punished uh, and I don't have to pay the penalty and I don't have to go to hell. Uh, but God's so much more than that. Uh, and God gives us blessings uh, until we get over there. He promised our future. Look back, or over rather, in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is literally the second giving of the law. Deuteronomy chapter 6, <coughs> verse number 23. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and uh, verse number I, I, I Let's start at verse 20. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? Then shalt thou say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence that we he might bring us in. He brought you out that he might bring you in. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God brought, called you out? Because he's going to call you in. <laughs> he brought us out that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swear unto our fathers and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God um, for our good for our good always and he might preserve us alive as it is this day and so he made a promise a, a covenant uh, there with Israel and he told them uh, I'm going to keep my promise I'm going to keep my word uh, your future is secure and if you'll follow me if you'll do what I'm asking you to do uh, then I'm going to take care of all these things uh, he, got, he brought us out that he bring us in that we are going to a land uh, that he's promised uh, to those around us he prepared our future he prepared our future the Lord I uh, promised hallelujah. Somebody answer that phone. Amen. Is the phone ringing? Yeah. Hallelujah. Is that your phone? <laughs> Say it quick. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I kind of got glad about that. <clears throat> he has promised our future. He prepared our future. The Lord promised uh, the land of the, uh, to the patriarchs. The land was prepared uh, for Israel's arrival. He prepared a place for you, and he prepared a place for you. What did Jesus say? 
Behold, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, hallelujah. Hey, you know, I, I, we used to, me, me and Jason, we, I told you about our roadie days and all that stuff. One of the songs that they used to sing and we used to do, <coughs> I don't remember the name of the song, <coughs> but in one of the verses right before it went into a chorus, it said this, and just today my mansion was completed and I'll live there forevermore. And that's wonderful to think about. That's wonderful, you know, to think that there's a brand new mansion that just, I mean, as I was dying, that the last nail was going in, but it's not biblical. Jesus said, but go, behold, I go to prepare you a place that where I am there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions, and I'm going to prepare you a place. You know, <laughs> I, I ain't trying to mess up. Uh, I mean, if that's a song that you love, I enjoyed that song. I always enjoyed that song. But I got to find out that God had this thing figured out, planned out a long time before I came along. God knew the end from the beginning. God had already made and prepared everything. And he had it all prepared for you and for me. Hey, I'm glad to say, hallelujah, that God has prepared through his son. Jesus prepared a place for us. By the way, that place is the mercy seat. That place is where the blood was put and the blood was sprinkled so that we could come boldly to the throne of grace so that we could call out on a holy God, a thrice holy God, so that we can come into his presence. You didn't deserve it, and I don't deserve it. We could, The priest could only go in there one time a year, and they had to go through all these rituals. And every Every morning, we can march right to the throne and say, God, this is what I need. Amen. Amen. He has preserved our future. Miss uh, Becky, if you'll come help me. Think about this right here. If you'll remember, I don't have this text written down. I believe it's the book of Numbers. They were going to the promised land. And whenever they, the old boys, two of them came back with a good report. Ten of them came back with a bad report. Said there's giants over there. There's grasshoppers over there. There's beasts over there. How many of you have ever Maybe, maybe you got an old home place somewhere that's kind of been left alone. And, and in a year, so usually it ain't even a year, and that thing is starting to decay. And you got all kinds of weeds and bugs and all this stuff that's overrunning the place. So you're right, God preserved that land for all that. He didn't drive out. The Hittites and the Amorites and all the people that drive out the grasshoppers and the beasts. Because he needed somebody to, to preserve. He used them to preserve where he was sending them. You say, well, preacher, I, I don't understand it. I prayed about this and I believe God and I know that God is working. But I can look and see where I'm supposed to be going. And there's people that occupy that space. There's people that occupy. There's situations that are blocking me from getting there. God is preserving that place for you. He preserved it. And I don't know how long it's going to be, right? I don't know if it'll be another 10 years. I don't know if God and Kent Terry is coming for another thousand years. But I do know this. Just as soon as I walk in those pearly gates, it will be preserved just like it was supposed to be. Everything will be just right. There won't be no cobwebs in my mansion. Amen. Uh, there won't be no problems going on over there. Uh, there'll be no water leaks. Uh, uh, there'll be no issues. Uh, hey, I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, that God is in the business of preserving uh, what he said. Uh, you, you say, you don't understand it, preacher. I thought that God was going to do this in my family. 
I thought that God was going to do that in my family. Uh, but the devil's jumped in. Uh, and he's messed everything up. Uh, he's wreaking havoc. Uh, and I don't understand. God still is going to keep his word. Uh, he preserves our future. Uh, whatever it is uh, that he's purposed to do, he's going to do. Uh, it might not line up with what you see. Uh, but I'm glad the Bible said this. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11. Now faith uh, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I can't see it, but I believe it. I don't know, but I still believe that God's going to keep his word. Let's give you to God. Why don't you stand with me? How many of us tonight will come and slip around this old-fashioned altar, come and thank God for the times he has delivered? I mean, I was trying to thank God for the times that he's shown himself faithful. He's kept his word. How many of us come and say, thank you, Jesus, that, Lord, even when I don't see it, even when I can't see it, Lord, I'm thankful that you're still working. Father, Lord, we pray on behalf of many tonight. There are some that are struggling with marriage issues, job situations, financial situations, health problems. We think about these two especially and the great need that they have. God, I pray that even right now, the great physician the healer. Lord God would make a visit. God do, Lord, what you purpose to do, what you desire to do in our heart and life tonight. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, God. There are words of help in times of discouragement and despair. I'm thankful that God there's help from heaven's shore when we're heavy in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for hope. Oh, Lord, I pray that you touch every heart. Help us, God, to leave this place differently than we've came. I love you. I thank you. I bless you. Lord, have your will and have your way. In the name that is above every name. In the name of our blessed Redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray tonight. Help us, Lord. Speak to us. Go with us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for coming to church tonight. And uh, we do appreciate you uh, coming out. Those of you that can stay with us for about 15, maybe 30 minutes, just depending on how quickly we can get our production line going, come and uh, stay with us. We're going to put together uh, 100 or so uh, treat bags. Uh, to, we're going to give those out on a Sunday. And uh, we do appreciate uh, your help with that. Appreciate uh, the seniors helping us take care of the expense of that. And uh, that's a, a real blessing. And uh, we look forward to being help and listening to some folk on Sunday. Be sure uh, to invite your friends and family uh, to come out and be with us on Sunday. Uh, Easter, Christmas are two times uh, that people are much more likely to go to uh, church when they're asked. And so we're going to ask you to do that as well. And let me just uh, remind us I, I say this uh, in most years. Uh, there's a lot of folk that's going to show up we haven't seen them in a long time. And the, the proper thing to say to them is, hey, how are you doing? We're glad you're here. We love you. Not, where in the world have you been? I heard somebody say, said that I heard somebody say, well, there's one of them CEO Christians. A, a Christmas and Easter only Christian. Yeah, let, let's not do that, all right? And so let's just love people and, uh, and show them the love of Jesus. Amen. All right, we're going to uh, be dismissed. Uh, Jason, if you will, grab the plates back there on your way out. If you uh, come prepared to give tonight and you'd like to be part of that, uh, 
you can drop that on the plate on the way out. Uh, we'll say, uh, we'll, we'll pray as we're dismissed and uh, pray that the Lord will touch uh, this offering as well. Ask if you will, Brother Ronnie, you pray for us. Father God, we're so thankful for you. We're not service, Lord God. We're so glad, Lord, that you don't only desire to save 